What up? Welcome to another episode of Cannabis Legalization News. I'm Tom, Cannabis Industry Lawyer, and uh, we have a lot to discuss. Our lead story has to do with how cannabis is being treated in Congress. So let's get into it. But first, of course, this is about a, a news channel that we discuss, cannabis policy, and also how you can uh, get a cannabis license and operations therein, which means that it's for 21 over, 21 and over. We What's up, Miggy? What's up? We did not get stoned and forget. <laughs> we did not get stoned and forget. The problem really is, you know, um, you have to try to comply. But uh, it's it's been hard. I mean, like, our YouTube numbers have just been sideways. And sometimes they go down and you're like, hmm. hmm. And then, like, Joe Biden's crap does not help at all. Uh, it'd be one thing if like they were telegraphing they were going to legalize it but they aren't they're telegraphing the exact opposite and that gets into our main news story of the day of yeah. the week uh congress keeps dc marijuana sales ban in place but continues protections for medical cannabis states and spending legislations this is a nothing burger a complete nothing burger yeah but it's also another reason why dc needs to become a state i mean dc's population's bigger than most fucking states these guys have no representation i don't think people understand that this was not something that was voted on or it was just something that was what's that writer in the in a bill that they do every year well, that- robock or farmer or like uh, it depends on who is actually in congress because congress has a lot of turnover and they just rename the amendment i think right now it's probably the blumenhauer lee amendment or something like that right but i'm just saying like well no because this is actually on a on on a uh, amendment for dc's yep. uh policy like yep. where is it at there ongoing commerce yeah. so it's the it's the representative andy harris bill or writer that keeps uh, can- cannabis from being sold professionally in the nation's capital and that's been uh, on there since 2014 and then the other problem is that this just omnibus spending bill that they're going to approve it, it has the exact same medical it, they don't have the expansion of what it would happen so The industry is not protected when it comes to uh, adult use. The adult use industry is still not protected. Can you believe that, man? No, I'm not shocked. Maybe, I don't know if DC doesn't have enough uh, lobbyists or whatever. Because that's all. I'm so over everything, dude. Like, money just talks. That's it. (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, there's some money in weed. There's not that much money in weed yet. Uh, no. A lot of that money in weeds getting squeezed and overtaxed and overregulated and all that. So it's not as profitable as it could be. But there's just no support. The politicians don't give a shit about you uh, or your weak crew. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Though, but with the lobbyists, though, because the lob- lobbyists are there to remind the politicians, like, we are here. You know, we, they want to make you care. You, mm-hmm. you know, and D.C., just because they're not a state and they don't have proper rep- representation, I mean, that bill is riding along since 2014, eight 2014, years. 2014, since 2014. And that, because it's been legal since 2014, like cannabis was legalized on the nation's capital, just not at sale. And so this has been there to prevent any tax dollars from allowing cannabis commerce, despite voter approval of an, initial, of an initiative to legalize possession and home cultivation eight years ago. Guess what eight years ago was? 2014. And so that's when this anti-legalization asshole named uh, Representative Andy Harris, who's a Republican from Maryland, and he has been re- annually renewing this since 2014. And the Democrats in Congress have been absolutely a feet little bitches in the sense that they cannot, they can't expand our rights in this industry. You know, you, you, you're going to double tax us. You're going to have an incoherent federal policy. And then you're only going to protect the patients and not the businesses and the adults that are trying to you know, select a safer substance for their recreational uh, usage. I think it's just like wishy-washy politics, man. Like, you know. Um, whether it be an R or a D, you know, they're, they're all, uh, they're all D bags. D bags. Yeah. Essentially, man. Uh, you know, I, I, I posted it. Did you see that thing I, I posted on our Facebook group about the, uh, with Biden speech? Cause you know, nope. I, I really, a lot of Check people on Facebook are, group though. It's uh, yeah, you can sometimes find it. Facebook.com backslash free THC. If you try to Google, I mean, this is one of the problems with SEO as well. And so I've been tuning up our SEO rankings on uh, cannabis industry Uh, And so you try to get some keyword research regarding search terms that have marijuana or cannabis in it. And surprise, surprise, there ain't none. They just don't publish. Yeah. Well, remember, I I think I told people who know me, I I used to troll cops, uh, you know, their Facebook pages. I would Google marijuana arrest or cannabis arrest. And they would propagate all these guys, you know, flaunting and and bragging about goddamn 
busting hippies or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. a non crime. And uh, I used to make memes of the, of, of the pictures that would share. And, you know, one day it disappeared. One day nobody shared pictures about cannabis, <laughs> you know? It's, uh, but this is the, the, the thing I was talking about. So I'm going to share the audio too because this is not proprietary. But this oh, one. Good. Is- I like when it's not proprietary. Yeah. Hey, how about you go ahead and zoom that up for a bit? And I'm going to throw to this little thing that you put in here. That is, that's interesting. This is one of the things Miggy likes to do. And so if you do want to like get memes, cannabis related ones, head on over to facebook.com backslash free THC. Sometimes we share them on this channel. And I also do like to put them on uh, my my uh, Instagram. But, you know, what, what do you got for us, Miggy? Well, you know, I generally don't like a lot of people like get mad about politicians when they're like, well, they wrote about like legalization. They said they're, they're, they would legalize it. And, I'm, you know, I'm, not for one did I ever hear Trump say that. So I never got mad when he didn't do it. Oh, it he said states rights, which is, a, you know, states rights. Yeah. bullshit argument. But this guy, he actually did say, at least listen to this. Very brief. Number one, I think we should decriminalize marijuana, period. And I think what? everyone, anyone who has a record should be let out of jail. Their records expunged. It should be completely zeroed out. Anything, in fact, that any conviction at all for marijuana now or in the future or in the past which you, your record should be wiped clean it's not something that is going to send anybody to jail the reason hmm. and why it supports crazy fact, though have already like it makes not, sense when you're I saying these words my, now my act on it not enforced. no they did the exact opposite <laughs> to act on it he said that don't invest in the stocks don't change the robacher far amendment so that it only protects medical and not the whole industry don't uh, take out the uh, writer from Andy Harris that has prevented uh, commerce and adult use cannabis in our nation's capital, despite the nation's capital passing that by referendum in 2014. Pass the safe baking bill. Fuck, pass every freaking pass bill that comes through your damn desk. desk. <laughs> That's right. How about we make it easy? How about we make the industry a heck of a lot safer by making sure that this cash kind of goes away and people can get bank accounts? I mean, I, I don't. You'd still probably set up holding companies and uh, subsidiaries like that simply because the Safe Banking Act doesn't get around 280E and then also allocation of assets from liabilities through other you know, LLCs. But it, it would just be so much easier, like the, the interest rates that we would get for our, our CapEx. So that, you know, you wouldn't be paying nine to 12 percent. You'd be paying uh, prime or whatever the average commercial rate is. Maybe maybe not average because it would still be federally illegal, but Safe Banking Act would pass. So at a point or two on it, that's it. Not, yeah. not double it, you know. But yeah, it's so crazy how the, the, the Dems just F this one up. Like they really shot themselves in the D on this one. Like you have I don't one think they have a D left. left. I don't think you know? so either. You got one thing to do. Legal. It's the most popular gosh darn thing. And then, you know, and then Republican states like like Illinois, it's like, we're going to legalize it. And Oklahoma's like, hold my beer. Or actually, it's Oklahoma, so it's probably moonshine. What are they <laughs> drinking in Oklahoma? I haven't been there. Yeah. I, I don't know. But also Texas, you know, Delta 8, like they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We can't get too much fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think hemp, hemp regulation is going to be changing this year. And so uh, the changes in the, the, the regulations for what thc is or something i don't know we'll have to wait and see but um yeah that's delta 8 still rampant in most streets and then uh not only that but i love these new delta 9 gummies and then delta 9 edibles because that 0.3 percent that's fine you can put milligrams of delta 9 into a gummy and be hemp compliant have you have you tried it no but you know I, i've seen the math and so like the math oh, yeah. checks out because you just do the weight by dry weight basis and then that's you know it's delta nine and but it's 99.7 percent not delta nine you know yeah no i just was uh saying because i i would hate to i hate to um give them like an impression of like hey go try it or don't try it but because i've tried delta eight i've smoked delta eight and i felt pretty you know if you're in a prohibition state i mean that's yeah. that, that's your that's your light beer option that's all you got buddy <laughs> it's, it's, but then again like there's no delta eight flower it's delta eight nebulized over hemp flower and, and as a mm. result that delta 8 hit isn't going to be like if you had a delta 8 pen because you'd have then a uh, delta provided you have a good source and i hope that you do uh then it would be you know straight up delta 8 like if you were in a vape pen it would be like straight up thc right. but uh, when you have the uh, delta 8 flower it, they take a nebulizer and then they you know kind of aerosol uh, aerosolize the Delta eight, but then they let it congeal on top of a hemp flower. So there's a lot of CBD or CBG or some other cannabinoid in there. 
Okay, so it's just a coating. I didn't realize it was just a coating on top of it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and then, and again, the uh, the one you know, I, I hate to give out like uh, like go smoke this product and then not even try and you know, I, I don't know how the well those gummies work. The the dude, and I know it's possible. I know you can extract delta nine from delta eight. I just um, don't know how it feels. I don't know how it works for you. Yeah, man. Well, yeah. let's let's get to the next story, all right? We got something yeah. in uh, business and pot stocks news. Pot stocks. And the bankers are calling on Congress to pass the Safe Banking Act. So cannabis industry lawyer here with Cannabis Legalization News. And we're going to discuss the American Bankers Association yesterday. They decided to uh, support the Safe Banking Act. So, Miggy, wow. uh, did you hear about this? No, I did not. And I imagine you're like on some sort of like association email letters, right? Because you previously mm -hmm. banking lawyer. Yeah, but I'm, I'm on like the section council for the ISBA's uh, commercial collections and commercial banking. And we were supposed to have a meeting right now, but uh, it's been postponed till October or, or April. So uh, I did not write an article for this month's um, you know, periodical, but that's fine. Uh, it's I, I don't do much banking outside of the safe banking acts now and the cannabis industry and trying to get uh, banking compliance. So the ABA, the American Bankers Association, conducted a poll. It's a pretty good poll. 68% uh, of it said that people, like businesses, they favor uh, the Safe Banking Act. And so consumers want the Safe Banking Act. Now, this was a survey they conducted with 22,000 adults in February, and the margin of error was 2%. Earl Pearl Muter, uh, who is trying his darndest to uh, get the Safe Banking Act passed, prior to retiring from Congress, said that this new poll from the American Banking Association says Americans want it. I mean, people in the industry 65%, want it. 65%, look at that. Consumer support cannabis banking. 65% support allowing cannabis businesses to access banking services, like checking accounts, business loans in states where cannabis is legal. And 68% support Congress passing legislation that allows cannabis businesses to access these banking products in states where cannabis is legal. That is the American Bankers Association. This isn't some fly-by-night motorcycle gang. These people, they care about uh, the three C's or the five C's of commercial commercial banking, man. Hmm. Well, and this is also an opportunity. Like, you know, we talked about how legalization, you know, what, the lack of what we have right now, the, the shit show that we have, um, you know, it's slowly going to keep evolving and shaping. And, and, and the Safe Banking Act is just another step to like maybe five years from now, I decided I want to open up a, a home grow opposed to a home brew, you know, uh, you know, one mm -hmm. day that could happen where I can open a small craft, something with like, you know, a little deli on the side or something. But, you know, we're not well, there they, 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 I don't know how small you can make a brewery, but there's there's equipment involved and whatnot. Now, that's one of the nice things. I was just on the phone with some cats that want to operate in New Mexico, and they have smaller license types than they have here in uh, Illinois, where the smallest is a 5,000 square foot canopy. And then they have different license types over in uh, Micros in Massachusetts and Tier 1 down in uh, Mississippi coming online. That's real nice. You can start at a 2,000 square foot flowering canopy and go up to a 5,000 square foot flowering canopy. Um, you know, there's just so many nice little laws that are being created that allow for small cultivators. And I hope that those are still out there and they're accessible. Safe banking would really help that because then yeah. you can access the credit markets and you don't need uh, guys that are in private equity. Of course, those well, guys in private equity would probably still be there. Well, that's what I'm saying. This shit show of legalization, it becomes so money top heavy that, you know, it's not even uh, quality that's going to win, the, is winning this fight. It's quantity. You know, they're, they're, they're throwing these buckets of money into these boats uh, that are constantly sinking and they come back up. You know, they're not really uh yeah, but look God, at this crap we're talking about the democrats you know and all their double speak uh, senator majority leader chuck schumer has been chief barrier to the bill banking bill's passage in his chamber recently single time it may be open to passing if certain equity provisions are attached i don't understand how you can put equity provisions into the safe banking act but you know maybe uh, chuck schumer will tell us soon uh pearl muter said that he'll be amenable to revisions but cautioned that too much uh, in the bipartisan bill could jeopardize some GOP support. GOPs don't believe in social equity. That's why I couldn't be a politician, because Schumer soon has been, what, a year and a half, two years now? 
No, no, he he did come out with the, the Cannabis Opportunity Administration Act, and it was just uh, a pile of taxes and regulations and him saying that this will help the small businessman. And I'm like, you're requiring GMP compliance? Yeah, because like every restaurant has to be GMP compliant. No. Yeah, I mean, they're going to meet industry standards is all that bill did. But the thing is, you know, he held that bill up for so long, and it's still not even like a bill, right? It's just in its informative state, which is like, I thought yeah. you'd be ready to and committees and all that. There's never been a vote on it. Yeah. You know, there's never been a vote on the say there's never been a vote to legalize weed in the Senate. They've never called that to a vote. It's how many times has not just the safe banking act, but like the more act to actually say what Joe Biden freaking said. We just watched it. I support decriminalizing cannabis. Why don't you yeah. support the more act? That's all it did. It decriminalized it. Well, it legalized it. No, it decriminalized it. It removed it from the scheduling of the controlled substances act there but therefore ergo like descheduling decriminal uh, decriminalizing it uh, he's just he's an old man but just the, the win-win for if they did pass the more act just let alone like agriculture wise you know we're not just talking uh recreational and medicinal but you know industrial there's so much potential for the plant it's just we don't get a touch even a, a drop of it what we've seen so far has just been this uh man-made fabricated just use for uh you know like smoking and dabbing right or edibles you know we've got this mm -hmm. limited perception of what this plan is it could be in your tire it could be the fuel in your car it could be <laughs> there's so many things it can be and it's faster to grow than the goddamn trees that we use for paper and it could be used for paper Seriously. yeah you could be using it for paper you could be that that's things that I really have me excited what they're going to be using for in like 20 years because carbon can be done with a lot of things and 3D printable substrates. Uh, and, and then not only that, graphene batteries and not only that, you know, building materials in those 3D printable substrates. So modular houses completely made out of hemp and printed, you know, made a, made here in America. Like, you know, we don't have to go to Sweden for Ikea. We have Seriously. our own hemp that we can use to create whatever the heck we want. But those types of technologies, they're still, they don't exist. You know, they're, they're a decade or two away. Well, like you said, made in America, that's the funniest thing. Like right now, the, the cannabis so-called recreational market is the only 100% pure American market, unless people are buying their containers it's, from it's China. Not just, it's not just 100% American. It's like local. You can't yeah. have the interstate stuff. And so it's not like, oh, it's that. Of course, California's like, watch me, bro. But <laughs> uh, maybe also Michigan, Maine. But still, um, yeah, yeah. you know, slippages aside, uh, it, there are rules about like so the stuff that we grow in in illinois we have to sell in illinois yeah. you're not allowed to export it same with michigan S technically same with california and all those other states but that's the gray market you know the the size of the illicit market is still like two-thirds or three-fourths of the actual market in the illicit market or the traditional market it's still one that's just very ambiguous like people are getting bunk maybe probably even hemp it sometimes because they can't get it tested they don't know they don't know exactly 100% the source, you know? All you're trusting is a bro, right? You know, it's like it's like people who do cocaine in, during the pandemic, but yet they won't take the, uh, the the vaccine shot. It's like you trust your your uh, homeboy pharmacologist guy, but not it's like a, an actual scientist who's been, you know, years of teaching and trying to understand. Like, I, I can't understand substrate. <laughs> I don't know. Unless it's like RF air shit. Like, imagine. You know it. You know it. <laughs> I tell you what, but I'm, I'm glad to see that the um, only 15% of people oppose the uh, uh, Safe Banking Act. So, like, seriously, we're talking that 85% of people either support or don't care about the Safe Banking Act, and it still doesn't exist. And that, if that doesn't blow your mind, we do, we are, all, we are approaching, quickly approaching, 20 past the hour. So uh, get your mind blowing accessories uh, so that you can, you know, just kind of remember that it's 2022 and nothing has happened in federal cannabis policy in 52 years. You believe that crap? Like no law, no nothing. Just wrong. That was good, though. I do quite enjoy that. I think we got some international cannabis legalization news here for you next. Mm. 
Hey, Morocco allows limited legal cannabis cultivation. I think you make that oh. bigger, bro. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And the screen yard doesn't have the best usages, but that's awesome. Can, I wasn't sure if you could also read the screen. So, well, that's what I, I, luckily I had it up over here, but also, uh, but yeah. Ah. Uh, oh, you also weed. have it up there? Okay, then. Yeah. Uh, Mickey, take it. Fields of Wait. weed in Kenema, Morocco. <laughs> the region has been called the hash capital of the country. Yeah, Morocco is the hash country. So, wow. Growing cannabis for medical and industrial purposes is not allowed in Morocco, but only in three northern states and under a district controlled by authorities. Wow. So, interesting. But Morocco will soon be allowing limited legal cannabis cultivation. Uh, this is a land rights country. This is good. Yeah. And Morocco is one of the famous places where hash would come from and they would call it Grifa and it would come up from, uh, you know, they would go into Cadiz and bring, you know, balls of hash in. And they've been doing it for decades, if not hundreds or thousands of years. Uh, and, and that's really awesome that Morocco is taking steps to start allowing limited cannabis cultivation, despite them having a large land history race. like land races and like it's been growing you know or but now like they get a license to do it before it was just all illicit and you know isn't yeah. that funny like excuse me you got a license for that farm what you need a license for that farm what yeah. that's kind of what's going on still in the states you know Most people kind of converting to the recreational market but you know the next big one would be like say india where to convert their laws because oh well, uh, we were just covering them a few weeks ago and india was yeah. burning crops and that's what they were making news for. At least Morocco has kind of said, okay, we can drop the facade here. Yes, we like this stuff, but we know we've been exporting it for years. Let's just do it on the up and up. Just why though? What, what is the hate for this plant, you know? But uh, yeah, it's just, man. Coming out of the Cannabis Law Reporter. <laughs> Fields yes. of weed in Ketama, Morocco. The region has been called the hash capital of the country. Do we have any photos on that? Because I'm trying to find the photos on that. Oh, no, we don't. That is just a darn shame. I really wish, you know, I love hash, dude. I really wish I knew more about like Moroccan hash. Well, we had the, the Lebanese hash with the mm -hmm. Sitka guys. And right. uh, hash is an amazing fucking product, man. Yeah. And I, I'm fairly certain that they were both the same style, right? They, they, they were just dry pressed. So yeah. they strip it and they press it. Yeah. And then like one red versus, uh, uh, what was the other one? Gold? Yeah, Lebanese yeah. red or Lebanese gold, and they had the crema, and then they had those temple balls. Yeah, they had all sorts of delicious products. So uh, is, fields of weed in Ketama, Morocco, the hash capital of the country. And look, they got the nice rolling hills so you can hide from the helicopters. <laughs> Isn't this just crazy though? Like billions of dollars dumped into like getting rid of this plant, and like thousands only left to like support it, and plant still winning. Plant's still winning. Dumping paraquat on it, you know, uh, hitting people, arresting them, throwing them away for life for no good reason. Plant's still winning. Still winning. Not doing shit for it on uh, the Capitol. Plant's still winning. I mean, you know, we, and we still got the BS in Georgia. Oh, my goodness. Are we ready to turn to the next story? Are you good? Let me see here. Let's make sure that we have it. So, all right, we're going to do uh, some trending news. Trendy. from the week lawsuits still yeah. blocking georgia's cannabis cultivators after eight months oh cannabis legalization news Maggie and tom are reporting that georgia's lawsuits is blocking cannabis cultivators after eight months this was a hilarious application story and it was a terrible one in the sense that georgia has a rigged uh, medical system there are two styles of the cultivation license the big and the huge and they aren't that huge hundred thousand uh, square foot of canopy pretty freaking huge but not you know two hundred and ten thousand like they have in illinois uh, and then the smaller one is a 50,000 square foot flowering canopy, still pretty darn huge. And then the next thing that you need to know is that one of the elements of this competitive and lengthy uh, application. And so you're, you're talking about like six figure territory uh, for your consultant fees because you're writing a phone book size application. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of back and forth with the public disclosures and the personal disclosures that you have to have. And then after all that stuff, you also have to have the land. And then you have to just have $600,000 in the bank account for the small 
uh, 50,000 square foot grow or $1.2 million for the larger uh, 100,000 square foot grow. And that was what happened was oh, yeah. True Leaf comes in and files a lawsuit. And so they filed this lawsuit prior to uh, the application window closing because they only really had like six weeks to get it done, which is ridiculous. Hey, go write 600 pages in six weeks. No, but that's <laughs> that's 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 how this industry works. Uh, and so truly files a lawsuit to elongate the process that they have to get their application in. And guess who came in first? Truly. truly. Yeah. Hey, well, this is not shocking, but this is crazy though. So eight months, uh, you know, this has been in, in, in court, but uh, Middle Cannabis was legalized in 2015 and the law allowing in-state cultivation for the program established twin four years later? Four Correct. years later. And then they have this crap. And so this is one of the reasons why when I see what's going on in Mississippi and I'm like, wow this is this doesn't read like georgia but at the same time it's mississippi and so like and tate reeves the governor so are they going to do one of these deals where they slow walk because in the statute in georgia they don't maybe they didn't have like specific deadline references but in mississippi they go you're supposed to have this application to us by june and july uh and they so that's going to be interesting but 16 companies were not chosen and they filed the lawsuit now all this was brought on by truly right uh, all of this was brought on. Yes, this this has truly fingerprints all over it. But this is this is brought on by the uh, uh, the the mafia or the control or the cartel or the um, oligopoly style of the limited market, where you're like, we have this, and we aren't giving it away. We are going to make it so difficult to get that we can handpick to whoever we want to give it to. And and that's that's truly essentially. And so that's yeah. how they set it up. So they set it up. So there's only five. Uh, cultivators in the whole state of Florida. Now that's gotten up and they're supposed to have another round in 19, but they rigged the game. They, they lock all the doors. They put the barriers up as high as they can. And again, this is a long-term money play for them and they're already rich. And so they don't care if they bleed in court for a while and they don't care about the patients at all. Well, that's at what I was going to get to. This is the kind of shit that like when it comes to activism and, 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 and like unity, and people standing up against like the big bad, whatever the big bad is, truly it's a big bad, and they're, they're a multi-state big bad. Like, if all the patients and 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 uh, consumers, because not all of them can call themselves patients, mm -hmm. uh, were to say, you know what, I'm not going to shop in truly in Florida until they pull the lawsuit in Georgia, you know, I there's got to be something people can do, and I, and I think something like that, you know, this is this is when you need the goddamn trucker rally. <laughs> You know, this is when you need like actual protest because yeah, it, it's not about wearing a freaking mask. It's about accessing medicine for yeah. medical cannabis activist Dale Jackson, whose son uses medical cannabis to treat his autism. And during the legislative committee, he said that out of state dispensaries have stopped selling to him because he's a resident in Georgia and they fear of federal law violations and prosecution and they don't want to lose their cannabis licenses. So what are they supposed to do? Up and move? Maybe. That's one of the problems, though. Uh, they shouldn't have to up and move. You should be no. able to have, I believe it's called safe access. You know, there's Americans out there for some safe access. Well, again, cre big creepy money don't give an F about you. But it yeah. also, it's the lack of unity that we have as consumers, as Americans. You know, one, we posted, uh, you saw, you posted on uh, about that article about the uh, the girls that um, incarcerated now in Russia over a vape pen. Yeah, and, we And did. the comments about like, oh, she deserved what she got. You know no, what? It no. doesn't work that way. No. An injustice is an injustice is an injustice. And then if there's any, if this, if this was something that would have slid, I mean, if that would have been fine prior to that asshat in uh, Moscow invading, uh, you know, they, that's so like that's one of the things where they might not have like turned a blind eye to this until they started a war and they're like, oh, I'm going to start arresting you because yeah. because of oil. And uh, that is it technically true? Yes, it's technically true. It is illegal there. But that's only because they're stupid. But people going, she deserved what she got, or just the most no. ignorant a holes. Yeah. Like, you know, whether it happened in Russia or Texas, you know, it could have been the same thing. She would have been thrown in jail and, and, and incarcerated. Well, I think the, it was a hemp cartridge, so not so much in Texas, but she would have got hassle for sure. But uh, it doesn't matter how much THC is in the plant, how much amount of the plant there is. You're freaking innocent. Like that's what we need to stand by when it comes to like talking about this plant. It's not a crime. Nothing to do with this plant's a crime. Tommy right. Chung got busted with pounds. And when they asked him about the pounds because of the bongs, when he was getting busted with the bongs, he's like, you have a pound of sugar in your house. Why can't I? It makes sense. Right. It, it, it does. It does. I mean, like you take down a plant and you know how to grow. Uh, it's not going to be a pound. Well, I take that back. 
there are people that can take down a plant and it's going to be more than a pound. Uh, but like, you know, if you're just growing in your basement for your medicine, uh, a plant might be, you know, three to six ounces uh, of, of medicine and you get like five plants. All right. So you're going to be over a pound and that's just one run. And so like, uh, okay, pound of sugar. Well, and then a pound well, though, like I, I, it would go bad for me. I probably use like a pound a year. And so like, I wanted a portion smaller. So like, you know, it stays fresh, but that's your personal consumption, man. Like, huh? you know, like right now I've been going through some personal health issue and I've been smoking a lot more weed and it's been helping. Like it helps me get through like the little pain I got. It doesn't get rid of it. It just helps me go. All right. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. You know, but Jim McMahon says about the uh, cannabis, medical cannabis is pretty cool. It's like, kind of, it helps me with my pain or at least make me forget about it for a little while. Yeah. You know, though, but that's the thing is like, it's a wellness issue and each person we are all like these individual snowflakes and like the amount like i know a guy who has like more diseases on the numbers in my hand and like he was born with all this stuff and the guy can dab all day like one grand dabs like just and he feels fine i i, I tried a little bit of what he does and i'm like i i need to go to bed now i'm calling it good you go appreciate you <laughs> you know but we're all different it's our endocannabinoid system right it our body does thrive off this thing it's amazing yeah, but, yeah you know. it is but we do have some bad news out of virginia unfortunately we have ganji uh, the ganja preneur is reporting out uh, that virginia republicans have quashed early retail cannabis bill unfortunately that came out a couple days back march 3rd tj branfeld is still reporting uh virginia republicans in the house general laws subcommittee blocked a bill that would have allowed retail cannabis sales to begin this september as opposed to mid to late 2023. So, bang. Well, is it, this is the one that bumped it up early too, right? The same state? They mm -hmm. wanted to bump it up early. But like these were the guys that said like they were going to, it, it, they, they bumped up its effective date early, but then Mr. Youngkin won. And so this is the, oh. what happens in Virginia may kind of resemble what happens in uh, Georgia to a certain extent, depending on how much the administration that is uh, wants to slow walk it, wants to put the barriers up. Administrations often have a lot of power when it comes to how regulated and who gets what in the plan, you know? Yeah, no, I told you. I, I, and I, I forgot uh, uh, Plumkin, Trumpkin, whatever fuck his name was, one, because I know he's in that line of thinking of like, very conservative. I mean, he's the one that's doing like the whole like uh, call me, uh, you know, here's a hotline in case someone's teaching like your kid's history about like oh racist goodness. shit, you know, like dumb shit. There's this whole weird ass war on books and shit, dude. Like, <laughs> are we going back to like 1940 all of a sudden? Like, we've got the Cold War, we're burning books. What's going well, on? Well, I, I was watching the movie Lincoln uh, from 2012 the other day, and, and it made me just think that back before we had technology where you could have like a, a live podcast and access all the information just at the tips of your fingers uh with somebody who's across the, the country and sometimes internationally it was just generation after generation after generation having the same damn problems and the same damn beliefs and basically the same damn technology for because it was like 1865 and if you like time traveled from like 1865 back to the year zero uh, you would not be completely out of place. You know, you would, you'd be like, well, man, there's no power here. Reminds me of home. <laughs> yeah, you know? right? uh, and, and then it's like, oh, you don't have guns yet. Oh, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be your King. This is kind of, this could blow your mind, you know, uh, but they, they had swords, you know, they, they did have the ability to craft metal. Uh, but then like, hmm. if you go from 140 years ago to now, you would just be like, what? You know? Oh yeah. Well, dude, I used to, when I, when I was in the Navy, I used to, uh, uh, go sit in the back of the uh, um the, the not the bow but the back of the ship oh my god i'm so old now stern and shit yeah <laughs> that stern and uh there at the at the aft part of the ship they would do these uh test cell runs where the jets the jet mm -hmm. engines and they would pull out the whole jet engine dude and i would just sit there for days and stare at these fucking engines because we went from 1930s propellers like winding shit up and freaking going to like these advanced systems that have so many lines of it's not just the fuel, it's the electricity, that, 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 the, how they figure this shit out. You know, it's, it's an amazing tech. But yeah, how we went from like almost not flying to like super jets in almost 60 years, 70, 70 years. years. Yeah. 
Amazing. You know, 1903, I think, don't hold me to that, it was like the first flight at Kitty Hawk. And then uh, 1969 is they're putting people on the moon, like 67 years. You know, yeah. that's that for Dick. And then, uh, but even, it, I guess like we went back 50 years ago. And so like we had to hit 1969. I don't think we'd feel too out of place. We'd be like, well, just Google it. And they'd be like, what? You know, and so, like, oh man, I haven't posted anything on the gram in a while. Like, huh? You know, um, th that wouldn't make any sense. And so, like, that's really kind of out of the ordinary or uh, these medical breakthroughs that we've had. But still, you know, it's it's it, it's not as different as if, like, you go back to the 1860s. And Oh, yeah. So that's why I think like even today we are arguing over the same damn shit that oh, yeah. we've been arguing over for our whole existence, like, even as a nation. And so are you kidding me? Of course, we would have just argued over the same shit and then people got old and died and then they just kind of repeated the cycle. Uh, you didn't oh, yeah. have the ability to like cluster information and have uh, you know exposure to a diversity of opinions as easily as we have now. We've also had like the whole idiocracy thing going on, right? Where it's like the smart people aren't having sex; they're just kind of preoccupied with like yep. you know, making the world better. And then like yeah. one of them dies, like, jerking it into to to freeze the sperm. And then there's like little Bowie Bubba or something. It's like doo, 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 and like he's got a fifty million kids. Yeah. You're having my baby. You're having my baby. You're having my baby. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I, I like that Idiocracy movie. I, I wish they would have gotten played more. If you guys haven't checked out Idiocracy, you should. It's so, a documentary um, the last four years. <laughs> uh, it, it, perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, let's let's just wrap up uh, so a little bit more of these uh, interesting things on what is going on in Virginia. Launch of cannabis. Is, so Democrat Dell, uh, Democratic delegate uh, Don Adams said during the meeting that the longer the officials and lawmakers have to wait to have regulated market, the harder it will be to take control or even compete with the illicit market. Well, no crap. Uh, currently, we do not have a bill that gives us a well-regulated adult use market amidst the backdrop of legalization in Virginia. We're basically providing a year for the growth and strengthening of the untaxed illicit market. She's not wrong. She's not wrong. So many people, like I said, in Washington before it was medical or when it was medical, before it was recreational, made a lot of money and they were smart enough to take that money and, and reinvest it and do other things with it. Or some people just kept spending it like it was a free lottery ticket and then one day that lottery ticket stopped when uh the law caught up with it you know yeah and it's getting kind of worse they're rolling it back and so uh shout out to normal and uh gm petty uh Pettinini. i i need to have her pronounce that because it's an eeny at that uh, so she, they're very disappointed, extraordinary disappointed for Virginians that were loudly calling for access to retail sales to begin earlier than 2024. Ultimately, a real failure by the legislature to provide for public and consumer safety. Well put. And then there's some uh, other warnings that are coming out of there. Virginia Normal has also noted that some of the crimes temporarily repealed under the state's legalization law will no longer be depenalized as the General Assembly failed to reenact the bills as required by the 2022 reforms. And hence, multiple marijuana crimes under Section 18.2 of their code are no longer repealed. Any crimes without specified punishments will default to a Class 6 felony. And so there you go. You have Virginia non-legalization legalization. Well, and I'd like to also point out that, uh, you know, Chelsea Higgs, who was on the show, Chelsea Higgs Wise, uh, who's a big proponent of getting that bill passed and getting everything, uh, the social equity and all the legalization passed, not invited to the signature bullshit. Like, that's the power conflict, right? There's people now signing this in the law. They don't care about the patients. They don't care about the consumer. They're like, now when are we going to get the uh, uh, the licenses? <laughs> when are we going to get those? Uh, when do uh, I get the money in my pocket? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, I see. He's a man of the people. Shit. We got some yeah. Connecticut news. Do we? Connecticut news. Let's uh, check that out. New Connecticut bill could kill cannabis gifting and billboard advertising. Oh, no. What? Why is Nobody it advertising? That. So hated. Why are they afraid to see the plant? Weekly high bazaar remains in limbo. A new anti-gifting bill could officially put an end to the Hamden-based cam cannabis festival. Wow, I didn't know there was a festival out there. Of course, you got to give cannabis in Hamden. Uh, that's what you do in Connecticut. You give cannabis 
Now, and notwithstanding any other provision of the general statutes, no person shall gift, sell, transfer cannabis to another person to induce or in exchange for any donation for any other purposes, including but not limited to a charitable donation or any donation made to gain admission to an event, said the bill filed on March 3rd. That is House Bill Bummer. I'm sorry, <laughs> 5329. Uh, and so House Bill 5329. Uh, but that sucks. And so, uh, you know, I understand that can you imagine that? Like you go over to somebody's house. It's like, hey, you, you want a beer? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I can't gift you one. But if you want to go down the street to the beer dispensary, you can buy yourself a beer. This this bill fucks nonprofits. That's it. That's this. So this is how Seattle Hempfest has lived for so long because it's a nonprofit and based off all donations. So if you're telling me that you cannot attend a festival without putting a donation in their boxes and you're, they're essentially trying to kill any local community that they have out there. Like, I, I can't see any reason why. Like, why do you want to hurt these? You know, what is it against people having fun? And and, and not mm -hmm. just fun, but fun that doesn't hurt anybody. You know, right. Oktoberfest have more goddamn uh, right. incidents. Adults than, engaging yeah. in behaviors they choose to do, which when you look into it, you know, with science, really not that dangerous at all. Actually, there might be uh, some upside to it. Show me on the cannabis where he overdosed you and like show me all the people in the hospital from all the overdoses show, show me right. what's going on that you have to like so save the public you know show me all these duis the accidents that are happening on the major highways because people left this festival last year yep. you know we yep. had a three seattle hempfest three hundred thousand people every year for what 25 years no incidences except for like the other stuff like weird drugs or dehydration you know other stuff but cannabis related Just I tell you, it just doesn't make any darn sense, and it just it, it just bums me out, man. Uh, this this you get you get legalization, you don't get legalization. People are doing the same darn gosh darn mistakes they've always been doing, and then and then you remember, well, some people live in free states, and the federal government's not really knocking down their doors too much, so it's it, it could be worse. But then it's also a good time to play some name that strain. That's what I think. We should do. That's the strain that we are going to name today. Uh, for those of you listening in your cars, uh, you would probably veer off the road if you saw this strain. It's pretty. And uh, it's it's very well uh, manicured and uh, nooks and crannies. No uh, knocked off trichromes. Doesn't look like it's, I mean, you can see the stigma on it uh, very much intact. Uh, and so it was probably hand trimmed and it's delightful. It's, uh, it's very pretty. I love the orange bracts. All yeah, it's the oranges. hairy. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't want to talk about your bud being hairy. So you ever notice, like, how do you, do you know how to differ the mold, detect mold in your weed? Like, sometimes the white, like, how do you, how do you see that? Uh, well, the time that I saw mold and weed the most recent, you could just see the mold on the weed. It stands it out predominant. Like mold. Yeah, yeah. It, it looked like mold, but, you know, instead of on bread, it was on a nugget of weed. Okay. Uh, and that was just kind of a weird I mean, it just it just happened. It was something that they bought though out of the treehouse, and so it was. Oh uh, my god! Sun grow. Yeah, but they, wow. they exchanged it. Yeah, and it was uh, it was unexpected to be honest. But yeah, this one uh, looks really really nice, and it's got some the one that I'm looking at because I'm looking at it from Leafly. Uh, sometimes those flowers do tend to show a little bit of purple. They don't really have very much of the purple hues on them, but the uh, the red hairs are are definitely there. One of its parents is an OG Kush. So uh, guess whatever you think your favorite uh, kid cross of OG Kush is. And we'll go on to the next story while somebody goes ahead and reviews the guesses. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen it so far. Wait, nope. You want to, like, scroll through them? Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen it. Uh, I'm looking at the, the notes, and I haven't seen that name pop up. Oh, I give, I give people that. a hint. Yeah. Well, we did give him a hint. We said that it was one of the uh, parents' is OG Kush. So, like, you know, that that's a guess, but it's just not right. Yeah. No, I'm just not a breeder again. You know, like, I just don't. I just love weed. I love good Indicas because it makes me know that I'm smoking weed. You know, Sativa's. Oh, go ahead. Yep. I love Indicush. Hey, David. Ooh. 
Not apples and bananas. Bananas? Oh, that sounds yummy. Like some banana weed. Well, yeah, getting... you know, that's the thing. Like, you know, I wish that this, we're going to, I'm going to move those around a bit because, uh, like, there is a new story that we can do in theory. Um, we can do something about stuff that I wasn't expecting. Well, you can kind of continue to uh, provide people their guesses. Let me know if you see it. I mean, it's a, it's a very kingly strain, if that helps. Kingly. No G Kush with one of his parents. Right, I'm going to go back to the old branding. And then uh, if you see it, because you saw which one it is, right, uh, Miggy? You saw it in the show notes? Yeah. All right. That's, that's where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so uh, that show note, did I have it right? Uh, no, no. That's oh, not, never mind. That's not it. And so, like, I wasn't, I didn't have edit access now. I do, right? No, I can't. <laughs> okay. We are strictly uh, professional here, folks. Even though it's like just our once a week meeting hangout. Again, this is just Tom and Miggy hanging out. We uh, we started out with the Google Hangouts, and we really hate love you hanging out. Yep, yep. And so I do have this. This I'll just pass this over to you on the private chat, so you can check this out then. So uh, it's this one. It's this one. So that's the one you're looking for. I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, uh, and then kingly. you know we're now. Yeah, I get that's it. why I said it's kingly and like OG Kush. It's one of his parents. King is in its title. Uh, and, uh, you know, somebody will definitely be guessing it here in a bit, but then, oh yeah, definitely you'd, you'd expect, right. It, but man you know. has set her wives. <laughs> All right. Well, you keep an eye out and I'm going to do some shit that I wasn't expecting. Oh, we got it. Oh, oh yeah, we got King, it. King Louis OG. King or, Louis OG for our name that strain and in shit that i wasn't expecting news we have illinois house approves workplace protections for cannabis consumers oh, but will yeah. it make it out of the senate will it and will it? adults in yeah adults in will it right adults in illinois who use legal cannabis during their free time would be protected from losing their jobs under a bill approved thursday by the state's house of representatives the measure, which now proceeds to the Senate, would prohibit most employers from firing workers or discriminating against job applicants for merely testing positive for marijuana use with some limited exceptions. So there you go. Once this becomes law, you officially at home have a reason to live in Illinois. For real, like New York already has that bill passed. I mean, states need to catch up with the law, you know, and unfortunately, the only thing they can't cover is the federal uh, jobs, right? Like if you had a contract or... If you're working for a company that has a contract with the gov government, like you are SOL no matter what. I hate to say it, mm -hmm. but always think on the worst side of things when it comes to cannabis and you and the law. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And so, but then we have some statements from Representative Bob Morgan. Bob Morgan is quoted as, if you're going to legalize a substance, you should talk about individual liberties and what people are want to do on their weekends. We should allow people to make good choices and not be discriminated against in the workplace because those choices, as long as it's not affecting the workplace, makes sense. I mean, we have all these news stories that come out, you know, water out of the South, for example, Virginia and Georgia today. Uh, but, you know, they legalize it and they don't. And they legalize it and they keep it criminal. And now, like they're they're legalizing it, and they're saying now that's right. You're not supposed to discriminate against these people. I think people like the whole reason why the more act, right? Like there's this impression that as soon as you deschedule or make it so you don't put people in jail, rampant shit's gonna happen. And because legalization's here now, but the infrastructure still needs to build for years, and we need a chance to build that. Like right now, this half-ass infrastructure, it's not there for everybody. <laughs> you know, we need to make this federally you know sustainable period that's right we need to make it federally sustainable period and uh you know kudos to the uh, legislature in illinois for passing it and i hope the senate passes it and very quickly becomes law uh it is and here is a nice little uh graphic out of representative bob morgan's twitter handle thank you labor and commerce committee for passing the important bill uh, and then it, it does also pass the House floor. So it's uh, HB 4116, Justice in the Workplace Act. And it provides justice for Illinois employees who use legal products on their own time by prohibiting employees, employers, prohibiting employers from firing or disciplining employees or not hiring applicants. Boom. Got that passed. That's nice. And so now let's uh, cover a little bit of King Louie. That was our name that strain. 
uh, this this week. And so King Louie is, according to Leafly, that old rag. No, shout out to Leafly. They're great. Uh, known as King Louie or Louie the 13 Kush is an indica marijuana strain by crossing OG Kush with LA Confidential. Have you ever had that one, Miggy? I have not. Well, I mean, I don't know, dude. I, buy, I walk in the store now and I just be like, hey, what do you have for indica at about $30? <laughs> See, one of the reasons why they named it after this old French king uh, was because it announces itself in the 1600s by its smell. So it must oh, really wow. be pungent. Maybe it smells like garlic or something. It does say earthly musk and a piney smell with dank, dense nugs. Uh, OG Kush has a heritage of Louis XIII and it's very similar to spicy Kush aroma. Pretty cool. And I've, uh, I've had crosses from that from a, a grower that I know. Uh, King Crasher is what his crosses were, but yeah, it was it was good. I think it's funny that they have names of strains from uh, English, fucking whatever royalty, but yet they didn't have skunks in England. <laughs> you know, like when we had those guys on here, like you're gonna be naming stinky, like they call it all dank, like all good right. weeds dank. C come on, I mean, right? Yeah, it is. All good weeds, killer weed. It's killer bud. If you're, um, uh, what's the name of the bassist from the Grateful Dead? Phil Lesh. Him and his friends are playing this summer. Can you believe that? He's like in his 80s. It's great. Uh, so I guess that like, weed keeps you going for a while. Well, look at Pot TV, man. They're talking about this horrific event that they threw uh, 10 pounds in a crowd of weed for over 160K and nothing mm -hmm. happened. It's amazing. Yep. Amazing. Nothing happened. Now, uh, speaking of nothing happening, I think, you know, we were just talking about history. It was a historical name that strain. And, and it's, it, because it was a historical name that strain, Maybe we should queue up one of our nice little bits that we do. Uh, Moments in Weed History with Tom and Miggy. Let me just make sure that I have the frame up before we hit the bumper. All right. And thank you for joining us in another uh, Moments of History with Tom and Miggy. Uh, Tom, uh, we're going to go over the history of hemp. And one of the aspects of hemp was that it was grown way, way back in 1553 by King Henry VIII, King of England. Uh, let me just kind of do a copy and uh, find on here. And hopefully my computer's keyboards are not too dead. Uh, and they're there. So in 1533, and you can't really read that. Um, now you can, all right. 1533, <laughs> King Henry VIII uh, of England fined farmers if they did not raise hemp. He would literally fine them. When I love this timeline, it goes all the way to 8,000 BCE. Jesus. It does. We could use this this one. That, that is what we would call an old chestnut. Uh, you know, how long? I mean, like great moments in, in weed history. But then I also like the episodic ones where it's uh, the story of John Sinclair. Because then you can tell a story off of it. Um, and, and then the other stuff that's good is uh, the, the patterns of, of legalization that we've had. Yeah. And all yeah, the study, no, no. LaGuardia. Love that one. <laughs> there's so much this conversation. There's so much to have about it. You know, it's not all about like. It's so funny when people find me to be the weed guy. They're like, you know, people know me at work or whatever, and they're like, oh, you know, you're the weed guy. But they think I'm like gonna be like this. I don't know, putting flowers in people's fucking hair and fucking running around. You know, telling everybody peace. Which I kind of mostly am inside, but for most part, man, it's about you want to go to work, you want to go home, and not go to jail. <laughs> right. Speaking about people that like to go to work go home and not go to jail uh texas do we have some do we have a texas bumper i don't think we have a texas bumper yeah, we'll do this one miggy and i are here with some classic cannabis legalization news uh beto o'rourke is promising marijuana legalization if he wins the governors so in his governor nomination and he's now one he's taking on incumbent greg abbott in the fall and he says that we can get that done when it comes to legalizing weed. This is out of Waco, Texas. That is KCENTV.com. I honestly think Beto will do it. I, you know, unfortunately for Texas, it's a legislative initiative, not an initiative by the people's state. So, you know, once he comes in power, if he became in power, he could tell his people, like, look, I'll pass this bill if it comes on my desk. You know, that that's what they did in Illinois. And that's one of the reasons we talk about it all the time here in cannabis legalization news is that um, your administration can really move the speed of your uh, cannabis 
uptake. And then also the, the style of the license structure that you have. If you have a really constrained style, like in Illinois or in Georgia, it, it can just, they can just get stuck like a turd out there. But then if oh, you have sure. an open structure, like in a New Mexico or in a, um, uh, Oklahoma, it doesn't matter. I mean, like, so the Republican Democratic, you know, aspect of it, because Georgia's Republican, Illinois is Democrat, both are quagmired because they're both really, really uh, limited markets. But then New Mexico's Democrat, Oklahoma's Republican, and they've just, their people are moving ahead and, and getting licensed and getting open for business. And they don't have to do it with a bazillion million plants. Oh, yeah. I have a, a, um, a sister-in-law in Texas, two of them. And, uh, you know, the, Texas is a really it's a purple state. As much as we see it as a red state, it's a very purple state. And I, though I think, though, if they did pass it with, with Beto, I still think for that compromise, it'd probably be like a super high entry barrier with limited licenses, right? Like, there'd still be like only 20 licenses for like Cresco or somebody with the Oh, let's hope not. Them. I really hope that, that Texas is open for Texas business. You know, it's not open for one guy. It's open for entrepreneurs. I don't know. Look at their oil industry. See how well that's been covering their people. I mean, well, oil is different. I mean, like it's kind of like saying, look at their airline industry. Airlines are not farms, you know, uh, airlines and oil companies. Wildcat drilling is something that you would do for a tax dodge because it costs so much money and capital to be able to go try to find that field. That's completely different than dropping some seeds and creating a weed farm. I would hope it would empower the people, but I just see how this these we, we've seen how this rolls out in every state so far, right? When when the people with money get involved and want to help influence the policy being in place. But yeah, I mean ideally let's hope that the the meadow could pass it for the people and have a more open like New Mexico type bench area to entry, but I just honestly don't see that because there's still that high uh you know conservative type people there with big money who question cannabis and question like why has it been illegal for so long like as soon as they see like nothing happens after legalization they're gonna be like oh maybe we should open the doors up more because nothing fucking happens yeah that's exactly what you should do you should open the doors up more but i don't know if they're gonna you know i do know that we've spent another wonderful hour going over the news of the week and i wanted to thank everybody for tuning in you know we have a great time and if you're really enjoying this stuff don't forget to smash them likes because you know we're, we're fighting against heavy algorithmic um censorship it's all, I mean, like, like seriously if you live in a country where you're trying to advocate for a legislative opinion and change and they censor you and they don't allow you to get any data out and so like when you if i was selling beer i could get search trend data on on those beer sales you know, if I was selling cannabis and cannabis, not even cannabis, like not plant touching, like helping you, industry lawyer cannabis, you know, no, you can't advertise, like Stripe kicked me out again, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, it's by default. I mean, how many, how many, channel, how many shows of ours, the mini episodes have gotten flagged? We don't even smoke. Like, we just do this. We talk about policy and culture and whatnot. And, well, yeah. And then we get started. The industry, the legislation, you know, like what they're looking for in an application, business stuff. Yeah, you know, it's and then oh, the boogeyman, Jiminy Christmas, yeah, the weed. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I mean, one of the days I hope that the algorithm uh, gets away from us because it's federally legal. However, just thinking in shower thoughts earlier today, I'm like, man, if Biden wins again and he's already this staunch, that puts legalization out until like 2026, 2028, unless he dies, and then Kamala comes in and she's gonna be like, psych. I used to love prosecuting you bitches. I'm going to prosecute you again. And and then people would be like, damn, Kamala, you, you, you cold. But then all the conservatives would be like, we told you so. But like, I don't yep. think any no, of that I don't shit. think it's going to get that weird. Yeah. <laughs> but he, it's pretty funny though. But I, I mean, it's going to be a weird coming years. I mean, first, let's just get over this whole World War III bullshit. And then after well, that, then, we... yeah, COVID. And hopefully that's in the rear view mirror now. And then, yeah. uh, no, you can't. You can't start wars anymore. At Go Future, we've oh, got. Man. We're we're working on it. We're getting real close. You know. Seriously though, uh, but yeah, totally. Thanks to everybody joining us for the hour. I mean, uh, you know, I uh, I was like I said, I was having some health issues, and I'm like, yeah. Last Sunday, I told Chad, I was like, I almost phoned it out just because I'm feeling like a big girl inside. But you know what? I enjoy having this conversation with you, uh, spreading the knowledge and. And just perpetuating the, the conversation because you know one day we can all stop not going to jail for stupid right. shit. <laughs> you know it. 
you know it okay man uh big thanks and props for everybody tuning in especially for the members shout out to them they get in our credits see you sunday we're still going to try to book a guest we have to find somebody but later Hey, it's a one hour show exactly. Hey, that was a good time. We had almost 200 people throughout the whole, or 150. Well, when you go with the general topics like that and call things out into Congress, people become more interested. Yeah, but they hang out the whole time. That's fucking dope. <laughs>